Well, greetings here from Indianapolis uh, once again. This will be parts review part four. And uh, as you can see, I'm uh, standing amongst some gas turbine engine bling. These are my replacement pieces for the hot section uh, that have been glass beaded and cleaned. Uh, this is the replacement turbine wheel, turbine rotor, and this is the replacement turbine stator or turbine nozzle. As you can see, this one doesn't have holes in it. It is in relatively good condition. Um, I'd say it's in real good condition. I'm no expert. and But you can see that uh, it's nice and clean. We don't have any cracks in any of these veins. Um, this is the, and this turbine, the turbine rotor assembly is in good condition. You don't see any cracks. So this is the turbine rotor that I will be using with my engine and will have to be balanced uh, at, with the compressor and shaft as an assembly. So that will be a next major accomplishment getting this uh, assembly together and to a shop to be balanced. We're going to try to wrap up uh, parts review by showing you some replacement parts like these two items and I believe uh, I'm going to get to my intake compressor housing which is the cast piece you see at the front of the engine which contains the front bearing uh, the air intake all the accessories mount to it and so on we'll try to get some close-ups of these pieces here in just a second okay you can see it's a pretty sight like i said you're in the last video i would be neat to see all these pieces when they were brand new and see how they looked okay this is a cleaned up replacement turbine rotor assembly from a uh, parts engine and you can see she looks really good okay here we have again the stub shaft that we had talked about previously this is what uh, inserts into the rear bearing uh, you can see here these little divots these are just uh, grinding marks they've this has been ground with a grinder and it's kind of kind of gross I mean like we said, this engine was a economy jet engine, so they didn't do a lot of fancy machining. This looks like to me, somebody just took a grinder and just, you know, like a grinding wheel maybe. And you see all these, it's just kind of rough, hand done, not precisionally. Uh, but I'm assuming that's the quickest way to balance this, just remove material. Alrighty. So, okay, then we'll turn this over and show you the other side here. Okay, this would be the front side of the turbine rotor, the side facing that attaches to the shaft, and this would face towards the front of the engine. You can see how, again, it's this is clean. Got some cobwebs and dust on it now from sitting around. Uh, here's our locator dowel index, so that can only go on one way. This little shoulder here, or is what this fits to the back of the shaft flange and this pin here indexes it in correct orientation for balance reasons all right here we have a look at the uh, replacement turbine nozzle and we can see how that really is cleaned up let's pick this up here look at the back this is the side that faces toward the front of the engine toward the combustion chamber you can really see all these welds each one of these veins is welded at the outer ring and it's welded here in the inner ring you can see here so so there we go there's a nice view of uh, future parts to be used. It's starting to get exciting. We're really going to hopefully start putting this thing together here sometime late summer and depending on the work schedule I have and uh, things like that we'll hope we get this thing going before winter. Okay.
and there we have some beautiful gas turbine engine vintage turbojet engine bling we'll just call that bling here we have uh, the compressor housing and intake housing compressor and intake housing well, now I think it's a combination piece uh, this would be the main uh, front structure of the engine uh, the front bearing is suspended in this cavity here so that holds the front of the shaft and all that uh, all your accessories bolt to the front here we have other accessory peripheral accessories like a uh, fuel filter and acceleration limiter and some things like that uh, are mounted on a band that clamps around the neck of this we'll get the camera off the tripod and uh, show you a few angles here this piece I had uh, glass beaded and then uh, powder coated um, I couldn't find the original quote unquote olive drab green color that the engine was but this is a close approximation it's olive drab green and uh, this will protect it from corrosion for many years all right we'll take a another look here a little closer up let's take a closer look at this uh, intake housing intake slash compressor housing for the j44 and uh, this is the front frame of the engine and the intake and also the compressor housing so it's a pretty major component it's cast I believe it's magnesium I'm not a hundred percent sure but I'm thinking it has four struts to support the bearing housing uh, the front bearing rides in this housing here presses in here and then there is a front cover and bearing retainer and then a spanner nut which holds everything in place this locks and sets the thrust because that bearing is trapped into this housing it can't move forward or backward the shaft it is tightened tightly on the shaft with shims behind it to set the clearances so this would be the thrust bearing in this engine there's a little cavity here then the accessory housing bolts to this flange here this gasket surface there's a very short coupling shaft and that drives the accessory housing which is where your starter fuel pump fuel control uh, tack generator and so on as you know from Jay's videos um, that's the front there these openings here allow for fuel lines to pass through and this opening is for uh, a fuel line and some electrical lines to pass through the little hole here is a reference point for the acceleration control intake pressure intake um, ambient pressure all right we look here from the side moisture is shiny and clean and it? it really is pretty see it this had been sitting outside at, at some time or another and there was uh, you know you get the white oxidation it, and, and like I said this may be an uh, maybe an aluminum piece I know that aluminum and magnesium both can oxidize badly if they're not treated uh, our aluminum band tightens around here and that band contains mounting pads for accessories like fuel control fuel filter uh, we'll have to turn this around because the back side here this is where the compressor sits it's a little dark from this lighting angle so we'll fix that right up and get you a better view this is a view from the I guess back side of the intake and compressor housing looking forward for our looking forward towards the front of the engine and now we can see the bore here where the um, front bearing resides and this, so that the compressor and uh, inducer uh, impeller assembly fits nicely in here it fits in the shape of this as you can see this is a bell shape and the shape of our compressor impeller was the uh, blades on it are bell shaped this is a nice smooth surface for airflow but we try to draw air in here and then it's it flung out so to speak flung outward due to the centrifugal force or of the impeller you know, spinning the air and then that forces it back through the diffuser so okay all right well so there's another uh, I guess I would call that some gas turbine engine or vintage turbojet engine bling uh, it's not as shiny as the uh, some of the internal parts, but uh, it still has its own gloss and per beauty about it. We'll uh, turn this on flat side and try to get a look at it.
before we uh, wrap this up. All right. Uh, well, one other aside, uh, I did not have this uh, area powder coated or glass beaded. I want. I didn't want really that contamination, and I really didn't want to have surfaces in here that may be sensitive to be damaged so they just mask this off. What I think I'm going to do, because there is just a little bit of corrosion here, is uh, maybe I'll clean this up, remove this corrosion and paint this with some Glyptol style paint which is you know used for inside of engines, electrical and gasoline and diesel. And it's oil, it's oil proof and it seals this surface up so as not to get corroded. Uh, this is a dry area, there's no oil in this. Uh, this is a dead space between the accessory housing, which has oil, and this bearing, which is oiled again with an oil mist, and it's got a seal here so that doesn't come this way, that all, any excess oil and air blows through and comes out and, and is consumed in the engine. So this front here stays dry, if, unless there's a problem. But uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of corrosion here, I really would like to seal this off. This is a, kind of a green enamel in here. And uh, it would be nice to replicate that, but I don't think I'm going to find that exact paint. I'll take a little look. Uh, there's the uh, Fairchild Engines logo. It has the Pegasus. This is cast into my intake slash compressor housing. Right on top, at 12 o'clock position. This would be a good stopping point and a wrapping point for uh, parts review, part four. I may make a couple of more uh, parts related videos between now and reassembly time depending on um, what I can dig up that's worthy of your time. Uh, you'll be able to see them hopefully as I reassemble so I, if I can come up with one more you know, video, or videos worth of parts in, or viewing and looking and showing off then I will get it down and we'll get it on uh, YouTube. But for now I uh, will leave you with uh, maybe some space and uh, to get some work done, uh, I got to get, so get the rotor rotating assembly balanced, and I need to uh, honestly, I guess I'll, after that point, I'll be ready to start gathering my wits about me to try to start reassembly and piece this thing back together. So uh, I will video that and we'll document it best we can and try to turn that into a a series of videos called uh, J44 Reassembly. Uh, so, all right, I appreciate your time. I thank you for your interest and your watching. And feel free to comment or ask questions. I'll try to help you best I can. Like I said before, um, any of this information you see me talking and giving, and when I'm talking about this engine, this is a recitation. I'm not professing, so um, I'm still learning about this engine, and obviously gas turbine engines in general, but in particular this engine, um, there are still some unknowns to me and whys and how comes. I'm trying to figure those out. So uh, some of you professionals out there and you know if anybody ever worked on any of these old Fairchild J44s, I would love to hear from you. I'm a, that's a 50s thing, so a lot of those guys are long retired and um, uh, they may not even be with us anymore on this earth, but uh, if they still are, any of you out there who used to work on these know something about them, I'd be thrilled to hear from you. But uh, I think it was a little known engine and it just doesn't really have a lot of fame and recognition. But hey, it's a good beginning engine. Uh, it's been fun so far and we get her to run. Well, that'll just be another little tiny piece of Americana preserved. Maybe I could end up in a museum one day and donate it or something in a future project. Alright, thanks for watching.